Hello, this is David Krugin, Senior FAE Manager with Goen Semiconductor Corporation. Goen's happy to be part of the ARM Design Start FPGA program, and today's quick start demo is for the Cortex M1. This demo design can be downloaded from the goensemi.com website as well as our development tools, the Goen EDA software, which includes Simplify Pro Synthesis. And we also have development boards. In this design, we're using the DK Start GW2A18, which is the Aurora 18,000 lookup table device. Once you've downloaded the reference design, you can unzip it. And in this case, we're placing them in the C drive GW folder and extracting those files, design files into that folder. With the GoIn EDA tools installed and licensed, we're ready to launch and create a new project. We'll click on new project, select the FPGA design project, and then click OK. We'll click on the dot, 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 and select the FPGA reference design folder. Once we've selected it, then we can click on next. The device that we're gonna to target today is on the DK Star GW2A development board. And you can select the device by either clicking on the exact part number or you can build it with the device type, the GW2A18, the package, which is the 256 ball grid array package, and the speed grade, which is the C8I7, which is commercial uh, speed grade eight and industrial temp speed grade seven. So the higher the number, the faster the part. Once we've selected which device we're gonna target, we can click next and finish. We're ready to create the ARM M1 soft core processor using IP core generator. Simply go to the tools pull down menu and then select IP core generator. And you'll see all the IP that's available for our target device, the GW2A18. There's some hardcore IP that's free and some soft IP core that's available for free. And for free also is the soft core MCU go in EMPU M1, which is the Cortex M1 that's part of the Design Start FPGA program from ARM. So double click on the GoIn EMPU M1, and then we can configure the IP. So we're ready to configure the Cortex M1 common and debug settings. Simply double click on the Cortex M1 block, and we'll bring up the common settings, verify that the OS extension is not selected. And then on the debug tab, make sure that enable debug is selected. Next, we'll work on the memory. The Cortex M1 memory settings points to the file that was created in Kyle that gives the M1 instruction code embedded in the FPGA memory. To do that, we initialize the instruction TCM and its initialization path. The path should point to the folder that contains the LED project in the MCU reference design. Once the folder is selected, you can click OK. Next, we initialize the general purpose I.O. and we do that by double clicking on the GPIO block. We enable the GPIO on the AHB bus and then we click on the APB bus tab and enable the peripherals such as UARTs timers and the watchdog. Click OK when you're done. So we've successfully configured the M1 processor for uh, GoIn FPGA. So click on all the OK questions and then we're ready to continue. Now we need to constrain our project as far as where the pins are that we're going to use. So we will right click on FPGA project one and select add files navigate to the reference design folder for the FPGA design and select the GoIn EMPU M1 CST file. We will open that 
and copy it to our source directory. And then now we are, have a constraint file as part of our design. So we've added our design files and our constraint files to the design. We need to process these designs by clicking on the process tab. We are in the process tab where we can configure our synthesis tool. So we right click on synthesize and we notice that the default tool is Simplify Pro. There's also the go and synthesis tool, but we will add our path to point to the files that we're going to use to synthesize. So we need to configure our synthesis tool to point to the folder that contains our source code. So we will select the Goen EMPUM1 folder under the source directory. We will click OK and apply and then click OK again. So before synthesizing, we should clean up all the intermediate files that may be in our directory. So we right click on synthesis and click the clean button and then right click on synthesis again and select the run button. And this will launch Simplify Pro to synthesize our design. So after successfully synthesizing our design, we're ready to place and route. If you select place and route and right click, we can set the configurations. For general se selections, we should generate the SDF file. We should generate the constraint file of ports, the post place file, and the simulation model file. To do that, we double click on the value and switch it from false to true. And once we do that, we apply and select OK. Next, we want to make sure that dual purpose pins is not selected for this project. And for Bitstream, we want to disable the security bit. So make sure enable security bit is turned off. Click on apply and then OK. Now we're ready to place and route. We right click on place and route and clean any intermediate files that might be in our project folders and then right click on place and route and select run. So now we're ready to configure our development board for programming. We can connect to the PC using a USB mini download cable. And then we can bring power to the board by using the five volt power supply. And on the board, we gotta make sure that we're in mode zero for programming. Once we have all this set, we can turn on the power to the board and verify power is applied to the board by looking at LED5, make sure it's lit, and we're ready to program. So now we're ready to program the device with the FS file, which is the bitstream file that was generated after place and route. This file contains the Cortex-M1, the Cortex-M1 program code, and the FPGA code to interface to the rest of the development board. In Programmer, we can see that we've enabled the GW2A device. We're gonna program the SRAM on the device, and it's gonna use the FS file that was configured with uh, GWEDA tools after we did place and route. So if we click on the program configure button, we'll see in the output window that uh, it's programming the device. It did it in six seconds. And now we're ready to see what the Cortex M1 design does in this project. What it does is it sequences the LEDs one through four in a pattern that you should see sequencing from left to right. Thank you for watching the ARM Design Start FPGA Quick Start Demo for Cortex M1. This is David Grugit, Senior FAE Manager with Going Semiconductor, and you can contact me by email or phone. And thank you again for watching. Bye for now.